everyone welcome back to my channel today we are going to repot this phalaenopsis orchid um, it was given to me a few weeks ago by my grandma who gave it to my mum I don't know maybe two months ago and she's finally gotten around to giving it to me apparently it did have flowers while she had it but clearly doesn't anymore um, and it still had the spike on it and it was growing this new leaf so I've cut that spike and I've dabbed a little bit of cinnamon on the top so you can see. All right, so before we begin, I've got my gloves on. I've got a couple of tools to help me, which are all sterilized with some rubbing alcohol. So I've got some scissors, some pruners, and my trusty tweezers. And I usually just use plain rubbing alcohol from the chemist to clean. Okay, so. Let's begin. It's interesting, so it's in a pot inside a pot. And I can see it's actually got pretty decent roots, but it smells absolutely terrible. So I think it's well time for a repot. So you just give it a little squeeze and it comes off pretty easily usually. Otherwise, sometimes you have to crack the pot with some scissors. And it's just in pure sphagnum. So you can see, I mean, these roots look pretty nice and green. There's a few dead ones. But what I'm going to do is I'm slowly going to gently tease out all this sphagnum because it's rock hard and it's packed pretty tightly. And I won't drag you along for the whole process. I'll come back when all this sphagnum's removed. Okay, so I've removed most of the sphagnum now. Um, there's still little bits in there which I'll um, pick out with some tweezers. But you can see the root system's really quite nice. Lots of green roots, not much in the way of dead roots in the center like you sometimes find. Um, a couple of the air root, aerial roots at the top have dried out, but overall, it's a pretty good root system, which is nice. Um, and you may be asking the question to yourselves why I would want to repot an orchid. That seems to be doing well with a nice root system that you can see from the outside of the pot. And I've got a few of my own reasons for that. Um, at the end of the day, you know, it's obviously my choice to um, repot most of my orchids, or pretty much all of my orchids that I get um, within the first few months. So I don't know that the entire root system's good just by looking at the outside of the pot. Some of the bits of sphagnum that I pulled out were really, really rock hard, and they were mostly the ones that were in the centre here. Um, but you know, as it is, you can see all this sphagnum came out of this pot. And that is like a lot of medium. And so you can imagine how densely packed that was in there. So that's the first reason. It was very densely packed and I knew that. <clears throat> and, oh, pardon me. And I don't know that the roots inside I don't know that the roots inside aren't dead or rotten. Secondly, the medium didn't smell that great um, and doesn't even necessarily mean that it's old. It means that it's been damp for an extended period of time. So I'm not sure if this medium has ever dried out since it's been in there um, because it smells just really wet and a bit mouldy. Um, the third is that I like to repot my orchids into a medium that I can control. So I have my own mix of what I put my fowls in and if I have, you know, some fowls in the same mix, in the same size pots, then generally they can be watered at the same time. I don't need to have a different watering schedule for every single orchid. Um, I can treat groups of orchids generally the same. So I just like to know what's in my media um, and I like to know when I've repotted it. So that's my justification. 
Okay, so I'm gonna take this to the sink after I've um, gently tweezed out the rest of this moss um, and I'm going to spray it then with some hydrogen peroxide. So there's 3% hydrogen peroxide in here and I'll be back. So guys, this is the root system and it looks really, really good. So unfortunately, I don't really even have any good examples of bad roots, but you can see good roots can be quite obvious. So they can be green, plump, firm, or they may look a bit questionable. So here we go. Here's a root there. And that one feels squishy. Oh, you can see it's even coming off there. So that's the vellum and that's just come off. And what remains behind is this string and that's the actual root. So we'll feel some of these ones at the top, but they all feel pretty good. So I'm just gonna leave them. Now what I might do with this orchid, so it's still got all its little baby leaves here. And there's two leaves, one, two, and they're the smallest leaves and I might actually remove them because when I plant this again, I don't really want to bury these leaves. And if I don't bury them, it's going to be sitting quite high. Um, so I think it's got enough leaves. Looks even growing a new one. It's got these beautiful big ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently just remove those leaves. Now I'm going to spray with some hydrogen peroxide. So I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes and I'll be back with the things I need to pot this orchid up. Okay, everyone, I'm back chosen my pot and it has some aeration holes on the side and I usually line my pots with some liquor beads just for improved drainage and we'll try this orchid out for size and it sits very nicely so you want the root system to sort of just sit snugly inside the pot if you choose a pot that's too big, you end up with all this extra medium that you don't need, which ends up just staying damp for longer, which is inducive to root rot. So the other thing is I find it easier to work with wet roots, um, wet, well, damp roots, just because they're a lot more flexible um, and less prone to breakage. If you're finding that your orchid sits a bit high like this, just twist it a little bit inside the pot and it'll just sink in if the roots are nice and damp. Okay, you want the base of your orchid just sitting below the rim. The mix I've got is some extra lecker and some large bark mix uh, for just some extra air and drainage but I've got mostly about 50% of this smaller bark mix, which is a mix of charcoal, bark and um, perlite. And I've also got some sphagnum and I do use sphagnum in all my Phalaenopsis mixes, just because our summers in Brisbane are so hot that if I was just to use straight bark, I'd end up having to water every day or every second day. So, when you're choosing your medium, you do have to keep in mind what was used previously. So this guy was potted up in straight sphagnum, which was very densely packed. Um, so that's what these roots are accustomed to. They're accustomed to a lot of wetness with not a lot of air. So if you go and just use like a straight large bark mix, you are probably going to end up with a lot of dead roots just because these roots aren't adapted to that same environment. So that's why I'm actually using um, a fair amount of smaller bark mix, which isn't my ideal. I'd rather use, you know, medium sized bark at least, but by combining 
this together, I think that, you know, I might still res get a couple of roots that die off, but that's okay. I think most of the roots will still enjoy this medium. So we'll give this a good mix. And we're just going to fill, fill around the root system. Use your fingers just to tuck all the medium between the roots. And what you don't want is really large air gaps in between the roots. So you can tap the sides just to move the mix into place. You can squeeze the size of the pots and the other thing you can do to help fill all the gaps is just to gently lift up and down the plant and that will help move the medium into place. You want the medium just to kind of hug the roots. You don't need everything jam-packed but you know you do want the plant to feel secure as well. Um, orchids don't like to wobble about in their pots. They like to feel anchored. Yeah. This guy didn't have a, like much in the way of aerial roots, but if you do have aerial roots, keep in mind they're adapted to air. So if you go and pot aerial roots, they will probably die off. Okay, so there we have it. We've got a newly potted no ID phalaenopsis. You can tell it's quite secure in this pot. You can actually hold the orchid by the stem and it won't fall out, which means that the roots are nice and secure. So I'm gonna give this guy a good watering now. Um, I like to soak orchids after I repot them, especially if I'm using fresh bark because if I just run water through it just kind of falls off the bark it doesn't actually soak the bark so what I want is the bark to get nice and saturated um, and yeah I also add a couple of little drops of um, super thrive for whatever it's worth it's meant to help with um, transplant shock and Yes, can't wait to see the blooms on this guy. All right, everyone, thanks for joining me on this repotting video. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if you didn't, just give me a thumbs down and you can put in the comments what you didn't enjoy about this video so hopefully I can improve for next time. But I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.